might be a demon. Number one, you see demons, okay? You see demons. That's number one. I've had many people tell me that they have had demons visit them and manifest in such a way that they could see them. Uh, maybe they're uh, sitting on the edge of their bed. That's actually the most common report that I've heard from people, sitting on the edge of their bed. Maybe they don't actually see it, but they have a very pervasive sense of the presence of evil that is palpable. Most often it's at night in their bedroom, and oftentimes it's accompanied by mocking or accusing them. Some people have reported them to be sexually present, pinning them down like they could feel them. I won't give any more details on this one, but if it's you, you know that it's you. Number two way to spot a demon. You hear destructive voices. Destructive voices that are not your own. Now, when I say this, I'm not just talking about negative self-talk. Like if somebody, you know, misses a ball on third base, they go, oh, I missed that ball. I wrecked it for the team. That changed the whole inning. Now, that's one thing. Or if you say, oh, I blew that test. I could have done so much better. Or I missed it on that sales call. Man, I, I could have done something different in order to be able to make that better. That's all just normal self-talk that's going on. A demon voice is different in that it is oftentimes accusatory. It will point to your failure and then tie it to your identity. It's not just you made a mistake, it's you are a bad person. Further, demonic voices tend to use you language, not I language. If you're talking to yourself, you usually self-talk with the word I. Demons generally talk to you with the word you. And they'll say things like, you are worthless, you are alone, and you always will be. You don't deserve forgiveness. They don't deserve your forgiveness. You are fat, ugly, and nobody loves you. You are not really a Christian. You have committed the unforgivable sin. You are weak, and no one respects you. Your spouse despises you. Your children hate you. If God really loved you, your life would be better. Do you hear the pattern of accusation and the word you? This is the kind of things that demons will speak into your life. Further, they say blasphemous things about God, about the church, and about Christians. They may speak things like this to you. Christians are all fakes. Your church is just selfish. It's all about the money. God doesn't hear your prayers. God could never love someone like you. God is secretly evil and manipulative, even though he presents himself as loving. These are all the kinds of destructive, accusatory things that you might hear from the voice of the enemy. Number three. Third way it might be a demon is that you are or have been involved in the occult. You are or have been involved in the occult. In other words, you have welcomed or invited spiritual forces of evil to be present in your life. When I say this, this includes Wicca, witchcraft, divination, tarot cards, voodoo, channeling, speaking to the dead, fortune telling, Masonic lodges, Eastern star, and more. All of these are ways of saying I am interacting with the evil forces in this spiritual world and welcoming their influence into my life. In essence, if you have invited them in, they are likely to come in. Number four, you have a deep desire to hurt, destroy, or kill yourself or others. So if you are influenced by voices to begin cutting or self-mutilating behavior, that's the same thing as was happening with the demoniac in Mark chapter 5, who had a demon, was in the caves, and cut himself. Self-mutilating behavior is the kind of thing that the enemy would like you to do. If those voices are telling you that you may as well end it all, that your life is not worth living, that they would be better off without you in this world, that's the voice of the enemy. If there's influence for you to mutilate or kill animals, that's the voice of the enemy. If they influence you to abuse or harm others physically, sexually, mentally, 
or even to wish to kill others, that's a sign that it's the enemy and not natural thought life. Number five. Number five. Fifth influence is that they manifest themselves in foreign voices. And what I mean by that is not voices speaking to you, but voices speaking out of you. So like in Mark chapter 5, Jesus talked to the demoniac, and he said, what is your name? And he said, I am legion, for we are many. Now in this case, it wasn't the human being that was talking, it was the demon who was speaking through the human being. Or in the end of the book of Acts, we have an episode with the seven sons of Sceva. Similar type of thing happened. Some Jewish guys that were not Christians were trying to throw out demons. And the demon responded through the human being. Paul I know, Jesus I know, but you I have no idea. And then the guy beat him up and they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. This was the story of a voice coming out of a human being that was not that human being. And if that's taking place, that's a sign that it might be demonic influence. Number six, you have negative emotions that are out of control. Now, this is the one I want to say, be the most careful about assigning this one to a demon. I'm going to talk about it, but be careful about this because everybody has emotions, anxiety, depression, unforgiveness, misery. But if those emotions are pervasive and crippling and influence you to do negative things, that might be a sign that it's a demon. Everybody has emotions. Everybody gets anxious occasionally. Everybody gets down. And the reasons might be medical. They might be a need for counseling. They might be something that's in the physical arena. And while emotions aren't a sign of the, the demonic, when demons show up, there is oftentimes almost always wild and uncontrollable emotions. Desperation and despair that oftentimes accompany suicide, rage and anger that oftentimes accompany violence, and anxiety. Anxiety is almost always present when there is also a demon that's present. Now it's oftentimes present without as well, so again, be cautious on that one. Number seven, number seven, deep feelings of shame about who you are combined with an irresistible urge to move towards addiction to medicate that shame. So this is not just, I've done something that's bad, it's, I am somebody who is bad. I am a bad person. This is one of the reasons why Kelly and I, when we were raising our kids and they were young, we would never say to them, you are a good boy or you are a bad boy, because that's about their identity. We would say to them, you made a good choice or you made a bad choice so that they know that their identity is a member of the family, a child of God, they're always going to be desperately loved, but they have the capacity to make good and bad choices. Well, Satan does the opposite on this. He'll take your bad choices and tie it into your identity, saying things like you're worthless, you'll never recover, it will never work, you'll never get out of debt, you have no value. And the response of a human being is oftentimes to try to escape the pain of those words through alcohol or drugs or porn addiction or other forms of self-medication. And ironically, going towards these forms of self-medication drives the shame deeper, gives the evil one an opportunity to influence us in a negative way again, and the cycle just gets worse as time goes by. Number eight, you have trouble in overtly Christian environments. You have trouble in overtly Christian environments. In other words, when you enter into the church, you have a deep pain, you have a lack of clarity, you go into a mental fog where you can concentrate normal in other places. It's a weird thing. You come into church and all of a sudden there is confusion in your mind that it doesn't happen in other places. Or you just show up at church and as soon as you sit down, you automatically fall asleep and cannot engage. Well, of course, that could be a sign of really bad preaching too, so... Or if you have a negative reaction to scripture being read or Christian songs being sung, if you hate being in Christian community and try and get out as soon as possible, if you can't stand a Christian radio station being playing in the background, those are all signs that there is demonic influence that is happening. Now, once again, any one of these may not stand on its own. They're all in the might category. But if you have a combination of these, if you say, I've got a number of these things on the list, I know somebody who's got a number of these things on the list, they are each a red flag that it might be a demon. 
that you might need deliverance, that you might need to apply some tools in order to decrease the influence of the enemy in your life and get it as close to zero as possible. Now, next week, I'm going to give you a list of tools. I'm going to teach you about the spectrum of influence that demons can have on people's lives and depending on what place you are on that spectrum, the appropriate tools to be able to fight the enemy. Hey, thank you.